Hey, what's going on YouTube? Um, back to do another video. Been working on the Brat quite a lot. Um, made a lot of progress off of camera. I didn't film it because there was just a load of things that I just wanted to get on with and get sorted out on it. Um, I'll run through what I've done um, and we'll do some more bits today and I'll get you caught up on where we're heading. Uh, a few things turned up. So bought the uh, donor car for the Brat. Um, not going to be sticking with the original drivetrain because it's not strong enough to deal with track abuse like what we're heading to do. Um, so I'll show you quickly around the donor car. Uh, I think I did mention what it was before, but we'll get into it. Yeah, so here it is. Uh, I did think I mentioned before in the last video it'd be an MX-5. This thing's probably seen bad days, but I don't really care about the body. Um, I'm only really interested in it for the um, engine itself, gearbox rear diff i only really want the engine gear some of the wiring out of it uh, the main reason i purchased this particular one is because it has the jdm 1.8 engine in which is exactly what i wanted um we'll probably be taking apart the engine and just refreshing it with new gaskets rings things like that uh, before it is finally implanted into the brat um so yeah i mean the car's a mess uh, the rest of it will just go straight to a scrapyard i'm sure it's done the rounds this thing um, but hopefully, I've done doing a lot of measuring, um, it looks like this engine and gearbox will fit into the Brat relatively easy. Okay, like I previously mentioned, um, I got into the Brat pretty aggressively, um, so the, the whole car is pretty much borderline stripped now, um, bar a few little bits and bobs. Um, I've already gone ahead and cut the front end of the car off altogether. Um, so we're making a tube front end. Um, the rust is quite a lot worse than we originally thought with pillars and things like that being all pretty badly compromised. Um, so the plan has escalated. The Brat is pretty much going to be turned into a, a tube frame car now. Um, so I'm going to be trying to retain basically this rear quarter section. Um, the cab section and like I said I've already cut the front off so there'll be a few repairs being carried out to the front um, but the whole rear section of the bed itself is going to be cut out I'm going to be cutting out along um, the line of the body here basically all the way we'll be boxing in the rear cab section um, to obviously make it fire proof and safe and you know not get stones and things inside um, all of the bed itself is coming out wheel arches, all of that will be cut out and exposed. Um, and then like I say, we'll be building a tube frame chassis that will basically sit the um, remaining of the cab and the rear bed section down on. Um, already purchased fiberglass front end for it to just save a bit of weight there. Um, the interior is stripped out, as you can see. Just left the steering column in just for now, but I probably will take that out as well. Um, if we get into some of the rust, I mean, like I say, <laughs> shame on it, it's pretty bad. It's had some pretty bad repair work done over the years, but you can see there's quite a large hole in the floor here. Both the rear sections have got holes in the corners. That front pillar drop down scum. Um, you can see like the pillar sections here, they're completely shot out. So they're gonna need quite a lot of repair work. Um, the rear bread, I mean, the fact that the subframe borderline fell out with a bit of a pull. I mean, it's pretty bad. So, I mean, that's what's brought me to the decision for basically taking the um, back of the bed out altogether on it. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's not, it wouldn't be safe. I mean, you could weld it. I, I could happily fix everything back to sort of a standard, you know, setup with rails and things like that. But um, I wouldn't feel it would be overly safe if it's going to be on a racetrack. The last thing you want to do is have a bad accident and um, the car fold up on you. So this is why I've made the decision to go ahead and um, pretty much tube the car. It'll be a pretty extensive tube chassis once it's finished. Um, we'll be utilizing the rear diff uh, mounts on the original MX-5 diff, which is like a sort of a flat bar across shape onto the bars. Um, so we'll be putting all of that in on the tube work. Uh, it'll have custom A-arms, which I'll sit and build from rose joints, uh, on, all in the back. I'm going to utilize the MX-5's hubs. Um, front end, I'm not 100% sure yet. Um, the front, I'm still thinking I might see if I can make the MX-5 front subframe fit, just to make it a little bit easier. Um, 
I think what the main plan here is I'm trying to get a nice balance on the car. So I'm probably going to cut uh, most of this uh, framework into the car um, because it's basically not needed anymore inside. So I might be bringing the uh, firewall into sort of around here with the engine to bring the engine back into the car as far as possible. Um, I'm going to try and get it as close to a 50-50 split in regards to weight wise. Um, as you can see, already got the whole rear sort of axle prop, everything like that's all out from the back which is quite a task. You've got piles of rust on the floor everywhere. Um, the original engine and gearbox is all out, ready to go. Um, obviously, like I say, front end's all caught up. Uh, we're going to be doing some more chopping up. Um, what I'm going to be doing is upending the vehicle. Um, so I'm basically going to stand it up on its front end and lean it up against the wall with some wood beams and strap it down so that I can start cutting and welding underneath. But I'm just going to strip some more out inside before we do that. Okay guys, I'm going to carry on stripping out the inside of the car um, just to get some sound dead and things like that out. Um, basically, I, I found something online that was quite interesting, so I thought I'd give it a go. It's um, pipe freezer. Um, I mean, it's on Amazon, it's pretty cheap. You can get a couple of cans for, um, you know, around like £12, something like that. Um, so I'm going to give this a try on the sound deadening and uh, see how that works rather than using dryers because I think this might be a lot quicker from what I've been reading. Um, so I'm going to give this a try and um, see how this goes. Sounds good. Yeah, this, this stuff works really good. Yeah, that's that's awesome. All right, let's give this another try. Okay, yeah, yeah I, I completely recommend this actually worked really well. Um, the one downside is you're probably going to need quite a lot. I've managed to take off about a square foot of um, sound deadening with it and now the can is empty. So I don't know whether it'll be completely cost effective, but it, it seems to be working pretty well. I'm going to need a few more cans because I only bought two. <laughs> I'm probably going to need maybe six. We'll give it a go, see how it goes. So the sound deadening removal has gone pretty well. Um, gone through six and a half cans, but that's the inside of the car completely stripped out. Um, main reason for doing it was to find things like this. Um, you know, I want to make the car as clean and as safe as possible. All rot must be removed. Um, I had suspicions there'd be some under there, so we're getting out. Um, just about to make a start on cutting the bed. So four hours later, um, I finished cutting the bed up. Um, yeah, quite quite a nightmare. Um, worth doing though, I guess, um, in the long run. But it's a lot of weight coming out. Um, see, there's there's the pile of steel. Um, it was rusty, but it wasn't unsavable actually. Um, we could have saved it, but. Hey, race car, build a race car, it's more fun. Um, doing some measurements, definitely gonna have to take out five inches from here, um, about here somewhere. Um, 
just to get the engine in. Um, I might try and use the power shaft or the support bar that runs from the diff to the gearbox um, on the MX-5. Um, not 100% sure yet. Um, might, like I said before, before um, hard mount it in. Um, obviously where the bed is out, this is all very flexible now. Um, so it's gonna need quite a degree of support, but that'll come off the tubes on the chassis. Um, <coughs> Um, looking inside, the floor itself isn't too bad. It's again, saveable. Um, it's gonna need some patches, but I can save the floor, but I'll brace up the seal sections with some bar. Um, and obviously make some nice strong footprints for the um, hoop for the roll cage to go in. That'll be good. Okay, catch you next time.